Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to learn about Streamlit. Now, the idea here is we've learned how to do analytics. We know how to do all sorts of plotting and expected goals and everything like that. But what we now want to do is, is produce a platform or a web page where we can present these statistics to um, a coach or to sporting director, to fans, basically allow us to present what we've done in an easy to access way via a web page. Now I'm going to show you we, what I've done the, in in collaboration with Twelve. What we've produced is some sort of basic startup package for using Streamlit and using our own visuals. And I'm going to go through how that works, roughly how that works, um, and show you the inner workings of it. Now the first thing you have to do is you have to download the um, the code for this from GitHub. There's instructions on the previous page how to do this, but what you'll have is um, you'll have the repository for the community there, and you'll also be able to see it in your GitHub directory. So I have my um, GitHub directory here, and you should have all of these files downloaded if you've downloaded from the GitHub. So here are all your GitHub folders, and here's your particular 12 community um, folder here with, with all the different things in it. So next thing for us to look in is Anaconda. And the instructions on the previous page also tell you how to set up something called an environment. So I've set up a streamlit environment here, which has all the required packages. Now, there's sometimes a bit of a mess between the different packages not being compatible with each other. So um, if you run the instructions on the previous page, you'll be able to get your streamlit environment working, and then you can open a terminal from that. Um, and the terminal, when it's opened, will look like this. The other thing you need to have is a some code, uh, a, an editor for editing the code. And I, for, I don't know, for historical reasons, I've been using Visual Studio quite a lot recently. There's um, another one which is very popular called PyCharm. Um, but if I start with Visual Studio here, what you do is you open up the folder. So if I open a folder, I go into um, 12 community and I open up that folder, you see that all of the files now appear here. So this, this is the ones that we're going to focus most on. These are the pages inside the app. Um, these are some libraries for visuals. We won't need that so much. Uh, we won't really need that. So um, all the files appear there. And then you can open them up. So there's there's basically, we've created inside this, we've created four different apps. One of them is just a dummy user. That doesn't really do anything. Um, one of them is a match page. One of them is a ranking. And the one that we're going to work at, I've just uh, put this together just now. Basically, I'm copying some of the other code, but I put this together as David's first um, Streamlit app. And what we also need to do in, in um, connection uh, with that is we need to run these things. So if I go back to the terminal now and I share here, and I need to go to the directory. So I go to documents, GitHub, and then I've got my 12 um, ST community, Streamlit community. I've got that here, here now. And the command I run to get everything up is streamlit run app.py. So if I look here, there's a thing called app.py and that runs the runs the app. So I'm going to run that. Um, and what that does is it creates the web tool, which we're now going to play around with and 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 change a few things on. It actually creates it, it'll open it in your browser. Now I've 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 got Safari as my default browser, which has some security things which stops the Streamlit thing from working. So I'm going to copy this into Google Chrome. I have a new window here, and that will now get me into my app. So you can see all of those apps. If um, I go 
back to the code, I had David's first Streamlit app, um, dummy user, page match, page rankings, and so on. I had them here, and I also have them now here. And so the first one is the code which generates the thing, and now this is the actual app that's been generated. So I'm sure the um, tension has built, or the, the excitement has built up now. Let's have a look at one of these apps. So this is one that Yerne at 12 built. You see, it takes a little bit of time to run on this on the local server. And it basically what it does is it um, produces the some of the plots. And if you've used the 12 app, for example, before, you'll maybe be familiar with some of these plots. This is our famous lollipop diagram, which uh, Marcus first created, which shows basically the expected goals per minute by minute of the match. The star is a goal. Uh, the height of these is the quality of the expected goals. So this was a good chance for Fulham. This was a good chance for, for Spurs and so on. Um, and so we have that. And then there's the XG race diagram. Uh, there's a shot map here. And so all the code for this is inside. I've loaded it into Visual Studio. And then we also have some code here, which simulates the match based on expected goals and, and gives a, a match probability. Now, you notice here that you can change Premier League, World Cup, for example. It's got the it's got the uh, penalties in the result there as well. But you can look at the different matches and look at expected goals per minute, for example. <laughs> I think, yeah, here's a bit of a bug here. It seems that they're, they're, they're not really prepared for over 100, over 90 minute matches here. Um, so it didn't it doesn't display everything. Um, so that can be, yeah, can be a project. You can sort that out. But here we have England, France, for example. Um, we can actually see the shots during the match and so on. So you can you can select different things. Uh, one thing I haven't said yet, which is kind of important, is and it's written on the web pages. This is all dependent on you having access to the twelve API, which you'll have if you're doing the Socomatics Pro course. Um, but otherwise, um, you'll have to contact us for for access to that, and that's really only just that's really only available for people who work for for clubs and want to do this professionally. But um, you need to have access to twelve API. There's also some advice though, if you want to do this later with Y Scout data or the free Y Scout data, the free Stats Bomb data, uh, there's a few adjustments that you'll need to do. I'll, I'll say a little bit more about that later. Okay, so these are the different things here. This is another summary. What we wanted to do here was just show like inside the data. So here we made a, um, this gives a, what we call a story of the match. So this is something that we use internally in 12. If you've used the app, you'll know that there's a little text that comes up whenever anything happens. And so we have the description, we have the, a uh, minute during the match that these different things um, occurred. Here's the XG for a particular shot. And every event is listed here. And you get an idea of the data frame, um, which we use for plotting different events. The points here is actually expected, it's either expected goals or it's expected threat um, uh, for, from our expected threat model, but multiplied by a thousand. So um, if you divide this by a thousand, you get the expected threat. So this was a 9.5% um, defensive uh, recovery by Raheem Sterling near to the end of the match. And then you can also see in more detail um, what's going on inside this. So this is the JSON file for, for various things. Um, if I... Well, I'll, I'll, do, I'll, I'll do that later, but you, we, we can switch back and I can see how I've, I've uh, generated these two things. There's shots here. This is all, all details of the shots. So the point, of, often when you're, you're programming these things, you want to make the visuals, of course, your end product. You don't want to end up sh showing the person you're helping, the scout or the, uh, the, the sporting director. You don't want to show them all of the data in this type of form, but it's very useful when you're programming and trying to like learn to understand that you can actually plot out these JSON files and get a feeling for how they work so you can know what you're, you're calling as you're working and constructing. So that's why we've left that open. Shots is the same thing. 
passes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you how to make these match pass diagrams um, as we go along when I make my own David's first streamlit app. And uh, Yane's added another thing here, which is season shots. That takes a little bit of time to, to load, but that's actually all of the shots. Um, I think, it's, were we in the World Cup? Yeah, so it's all of the shots in the World Cup look a bit, little bit like that. So I think later I'm going to ask Yone to sh show us how to filter those down to players and so on um, and make plots like that. Okay, so now you can see what the, what the code we've got creates. Let's have a look back into the code itself. Um, and if I share here, so what we were mainly looking at now was this page match. And there's a fair bit of code here that make all of the different plots. So I'm actually going to start, instead of going through all of this code, you can have a look through it later. Um, a lot of it calls the visuals and it loads in the expected goals and so on. But instead of going through all of this slightly more complicated code, what I've done is I've created something which is called David's First Streamlit app. And I'm gonna go step by step through this. So what I've done here is I've typed in streamlit run app.py into the, uh, I've first gone into the 12 streamlit community folder. And that produces a web address that you can either copy into your web browser or it will automatically open in your default web browser, which contains this. And you can see there's two parts here. Here is the Visual Studio where the actual code is. And here is the output of the code. So if you see here, I've got David's first streamlit dummy user page match. And we're going to just go through the code for David's first streamlet here. It's, I don't know, it's always dangerous when you say things are simple, but this is like kind of blindingly simple. It's, it, it's, it's amazing for me because I'm really interested in the programming and the mathematics and so on. But what Streamlet allows you to do is turn that into easy to navigate web pages. And so if we just look here at the um, the bars that have come up. So there's competition here, where we've got different competitions. Then we've got matches inside those different competitions. Okay, and the the command which created this is just simply this. We made we made a function here, which loads in the competitions from twelve. It um, allows you to make, a, 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 so this is a st is a streamlet command. It says streamlet sidebar. This is a sidebar, obvious, obviously. And this is a select box just with the competitions. And it should have a little bit of formatting there, but basically you've got your competitions there. And then it will return this. And so we call, yeah, the, first of all, the header, of course, David's plots passes, that comes up there. So that's a streamlet command as well that puts the header there. Then the competitions that you get, they come back from the sidebar. Here I call the sidebar. Okay, I'll just, can I just move this across there? So we've got everything nicely. So there we've got the, the called the sidebar, and there we've made the sidebar, and that's this thing here. Then next underneath the sidebar, we have the matches. And that's created by getting the matches. Again, we use the sidebar command. This time we don't use a function, but this idea is exactly the same. We um, go into the match. We do some formatting here. So if you look carefully at the formatting, we've formatted this function, which allows you to have the, the home team, the away team, and the score line in the middle. So this function here, matches dict, is used for the formatting of the of the drop down in the sidebar. Then what's next? Well, the next thing we have, we have this little button here with passes. Now, really, and, and you can see this in some of the other apps that we've we've got there. If you look inside the uh, page match, for example, you can have more than one button. Here I've just got one button, but I wanted to just keep that in so you can see the structure here that you have you have drop down menus on the left, and then you go over to buttons on the right, and these buttons allow you to look at different things. And so the button here, it says passes, and that means we get the passes. And then this particular thing, this gets uh, the passes data frame from 12. So this is going to be all the passes for the selected match ID. And the selected match ID was the thing that came back from the sidebar. 
And now we put all the passes there in a data frame and we want home team passes. So I can change this. This is going to be one thing that I think is very nice. You change it, you save it here. And if you refresh the code there, it now shows the away team passes. So the first one I showed was the home team passes. Now I've got the away team passes. Everything I'm doing here with the break, that's inside the, the streamlit functionality. Um, and so you can, yeah, you can make changes to the code directly here. And if you reload the reload the page, it will um, update it. So now I've I cha made a change, I've got throw-ins, okay? Um, there's a little bit extra here you can do, for example, so I, in, I mentioned earlier that we, this particular data frame that works in 12 points, which is kind of like expected threat multiplied by a thousand. So if I want all of the expected threat passes that are below, or that are above 20 points, so that's like 0 0.2, um, expected threat. I put that in there and save that and I'll run that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I have to do data frame passes, don't I? Of course. Um, yeah, I also needed to correct here that I wrote pass, pass instead of passes. But now I've got all the passes that have greater than one point here or like 0 0.01 and then I can have this which should be all the passes that are greater than two percent in terms of expected threat so you have these passes that are further up the pitch are the more dangerous ones um, and it really is as simple as that that you basically you work in the normal way that we've worked all the way up in uh, up to this with data frames and passes putting in different um, ways of of sorting or what types of pass that we'd like to do. You save that here and you can display it there. So it replaces, basically, you can think of it like this, it's replacing the plotting part of what we did when we made the visuals with just outputting it as a web page. One last thing at the bottom, you'll see here that when we make professional apps, of course, we don't have like a load of JSON files here, but often when you're programming, it's very useful to remember what you're doing like this when I, I messed up the names of the, the data frames here is that you can actually write out everything there. So that passes, that's the thing that I called originally. It should work here if I do DF passes that I will just get the actual data frame that I'm working with. So it comes out as a table there. So it automatically picks up that it's a table and you can look at the data frame there. As I've said, there's this page match page match that has a few additional things. So that's a good starting point. If you look at how we made those visuals, then you can get a good idea about how you can make your own visuals. So um, yeah, have, have fun.